Hi, this is Stacy, and welcome to The Advisor. Today, we have an insightful conversation that we're going to have with, and we are going to actually uh, go on a transformational journey because um, what we have today is a special guest, and her name is Lindsay Klun. And Lindsay is the owner of a thriving spiritual counseling business dedicated to guiding individuals on a path to re rediscovering purpose and joy in their lives with a passion for harmony and deep appreciation for the interconnectedness of healing, mental health, and spirituality. Lindsay is drawn to, a, to sharing her wisdom with broader audiences. So join us as we de delve into finding balance, fostering growth, and creating a meaningful connection in the pursuit of holistic living and well-being. So get ready for this enlightening conversation filled with insightful and inspiration from Lindsay. So Lindsay, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. No, oh, thank you. What an introduction. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, I love what I do. Um, I've been a spiritual counselor uh, who emphasizes energy work, um, energy healing and reading work and um, meditation for almost 15 years. For a mm. long time, it was on the side as I was uh, in the software space full time. And now mm. it's been about a year and a half full time doing this work, which I love so much. So I work one on one with people and I also teach classes most weeks. Oh, wow. That sounds enlightening. I love it. I love it. So what type of classes do you teach? Like what type of things do you do? Because you mentioned to me that you do energy healing and you do energy therapy. Um, tell us a little about that. Sure. Yeah. So during the classes, um, which you could call group sessions, um, uh -huh. I do emphasize deep meditation. So a lot of it is teaching people how to access that really quiet, still space within. Yes. Um, it's from that space that I feel like I am uh, able to read energy the most clearly, be able to help people move energy. And in teaching them to do it themselves, I feel like we're really setting um, everyone up for ultimate success to not need to have me do it for them to help right. teach people how to do it themselves. Uh, meditation is one of these things that people talk so much about these days. You know, we all know it's it's good for us, even from just a baseline scientific neurological level, we know it's good for us, but it can be really hard to access. Yes. Um, learn how to find that stillness and peace. So that's a lot of the baseline that I teach is how to first find that. And then mm -hmm. from there, be able to utilize uh, more of the energetic tools and spiritual framings of how we can experience and get to know ourselves. I know even in the beginning, when I first started to meditate many years ago, you know, it was hard in the beginning because, you know, I would be, let's say in a meditation class and the class, it would be a 45 minute class. And by the end of the class, you know, that was when I was ready to feel relaxed, but the class is over, you know, like it took me like that 45 minute span to get to the point where I actually felt at peace with myself. But, you know, like you said, it comes with practice. Now I could go right into meditation very quickly. I could relax very quickly, but it takes practice. And it's for people who want to learn how to like release themselves and to, to relax. Is there certain, certain ways or certain methods or steps that you suggest to people? Because it's hard for a lot of people to just let go, relax, clear their mind, clear their body, clear the, the bad energy, negative energy that might be surrounding them or might be in them. How do you suggest that people start with meditation and work their way to, to an area where it's really effective? Yeah, especially for so many of us who are such hard workers, right? I, I'm sure you and a lot of your listeners can relate to having a lot of expectations put on yeah. you or that you put on yourself, a lot of responsibility, a lot of right. stress. And so when we close our eyes and try to meditate, usually that's what we hit first is all of that mix of stress and, yeah. and expectation. And so it takes time. You know, when we look at it from just a nervous system level, it does take, like you uh, noticed, at least 20 minutes to kind of downregulate the nervous system so that we yeah. even have a chance of kind of finding that space. Right. Um, next level then is after we kind of learn how to self-soothe our body is being able to meet our uh, thoughts and recognize, A, we're not our thoughts, and B, we have opportunity to relate to our thoughts in a really new way more mm -hmm. space from them. Right. Yes. Um, for me individually, I needed to, the way I got into this many years ago, it was probably 25 years ago. Now that I really got into meditation was through bike racing. I was a professional mountain bike racer for wow. a short, right. Kind of during and after college. Yeah. 
And it was when my body was really tired that I could actually begin to access that stillness within. So exercise, you know, and maintain kind of, um, caring for our physical body can be the way in. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Have you noticed that? What is, uh, has exercise been a part of your path with meditation? Oh yeah. I find when I would exercise, like even in corporate yoga or just doing like the treadmill or just like stretching, doing some Zen yoga where you just, you're just stretching your body and, and, or just, just doing different types of poses. I would feel more relaxed. I would feel more focused. I would feel more energetic, you know, just circulating the, the, the blood flow in my body and being able to actually just clear my mind. And sometimes I would just put music on just music that I would, could resonate with. And while I was exercising, just incorporating the music and just exercising and releasing the stress actually had a huge impact on the way I was feeling the entire day. It actually put me on a, on a very good track. And I noticed over time and continuing that behavior and that habit that I actually was improving my health by doing that, not just mentally, physically, spiritually, all around. It, it affected my my whole entire body in many ways. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's where it's really important to acknowledge and honor all of these layers of us, because I see all of us as being very multidimensional. And that means that including our physical layer, which no, we're not our body, but without Mm -hmm. honoring our body first, it's really hard to also access the higher, more spiritual um, layers of ourselves, which is I like to move people to when they're in that deep meditation space, but we don't want to try to jump over the body's needs first. We really need to start there. Um, So generally my classes all focus or kind of emphasize some layer of deep meditation. Um, You know, it's quality over quantity. So it's not necessarily about the time, but it's about the depth. Yeah. When I meditate with a group, I have noticed as an energy person, I'm very much into reading and and kind of moving energy. I think it really helps to meditate with a group. You know, we can by ourselves, absolutely. But I um, remind people that when we come together with a shared intention, we can feel that even when yeah. we're all, you know, all around the world, I have clients all over the world. So half the time people are joining it, you know, um, really kind of really early in the morning, really late at night, um, depending on where they are at in the world, but you can feel that. And oh, I love yeah. in that sense of kind of a global connectivity uh, as we're running these sessions with bigger groups. I've noticed when I've done group sessions, um, the amount of strength you feel in, in the room when it comes to the energy, you could like the energy feels so powerful, you know, especially when you have like-minded people with the same goal and, and intended, you can feel like they, it's a, it's a crazy feeling. Cause you feel this, this, this really strong sense of energy in the room when you're, when you're working with a group of people, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That sense of connectivity in a more multidimensional space is really powerful. And and I do love that. And I think that's why people keep coming back to the group sessions is because you can feel that it's a really unique kind of uh, connectivity that you have with yourself and with others when you kind of connect on that level. And when it comes to like Reiki or it comes to like energy healing, what's a great way? Because a lot of people, they will go to somebody and they, you know, you could also do some of these things at home. You know, if you're feeling not right, or if you feel like you need to release some negativity, or you feel like you just need to get balanced in your energy, like what are some ways someone could actually practice energy healing at home? Yeah. Yeah. One of my um, favorite, most foundational tools I teach uh, is roots. And that's really connecting into this concept of grounding. Yes. When we think of ourselves as a spark of consciousness or a spark of energy with the body, it's really important or uh, helpful to consider ourselves like a lightning rod where there's all this energy around us. If we're ungrounded, the energy kind of gets in and it can feel messy. It can feel overwhelming, exhausting, um, anxiety inducing, makes feel apathy, all these things. When we're grounded, energy kind of moves through us and then away, right? The the earth is one of the greatest kind of energetic recyclers in that way. Yeah. So um, when we consider uh, uh, roots or grounding, I love inviting people to feel held by old ancient roots that are kind of growing up from the earth. 
and holding you right around your hips and going deep, deep down but into the very center of the earth. And this gives us uh, a construct and a relationship energetically to how we can be held by the earth, which I do think is happening irrespective. But yeah. when we put attention on it, it kind of amplifies it. It gives us that sense of being rooted, of anything that's hanging out with us that's not serving us gets to just drain right off. Mama Earth right. will cycle it into something better than stress, right? She'll recycle yeah. it into like a baby flower, a baby animal is what I like to say. Um, and it gives you that sense of being held, right? Yeah. Letting yourself be supported here because it's all too easy to feel like uh, this world is really hard. And yeah. you know, any little ounce of support we can give ourselves and focus on being supported in each moment, I think is a huge assist. Oh, for sure. Definitely, definitely. And when you see people like, you know, a lot of times we have, when, when you think about the chakras or you think about the heart, you know, a lot of people have, I call it like emotional garbage and a lot of repressed emotions, a lot of, you know, trauma that they've been through or situations and obstacles that really have played a toll on their lives. What are some of the things that you suggest that they could do to heal themselves that will help them to start releasing the, the hurt, the anger, the fears, the, the different traumas that they went through and the obstacles that have kind of have played a part in their life? What would yeah. be some ways that could, can help a person? Oh, there's so many ways. How do I pick? Well, it really depends <laughs> on where their trauma started. And this is, I mean, I, I it makes me smile because um, I find this cross-section of our body and our emotions and our psyche to be so fascinating. And yeah. there is much opportunity for healing um, now, now more than ever. Um, I see from an energetic level, there's like this quickening happening that we could see playing out on the earth plane by people, uh, for example, having less stigma around mental health, you know, yeah. so we see the sense of a quickening, um, not always as people all being drawn to uh, the construct of energy, but it's this opening that people yeah. are having that's offering them more freedom that says, let's look here. Yeah. Um, helps norm the sense that like humanhood is hard yeah. and we all get buried, you know, we all can get buried in different things. Even when our lives look really shiny and happy, there's always challenges. Yes. Um, no matter how someone grew up. And so, you know, I think it's really helpful to understand a, it's okay to have that. What did you call it? Emotional garbage or, yes. you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah, that's a good word for it. There's mm -hmm. a lot of garbage that we hang on to. Um, I see spiritual growth, not as us necessarily getting better or improving ourselves or healing, but really peeling back the layers of yeah. holding on to lies, old pain that keeps us from having the wholeness that's already there, right? Yeah. We're within already whole and healed it's how do we offer ourselves that lived experience in these bodies in this crazy incredible world mm -hmm. um how do we do that and right. you know a lot of times the trauma sticks on a physical level and so it's where you know the spiritual planes is where i love to kind of dance and yeah. you know bridging that to our physical level is really the key to help learn um how to work with for example our nervous system right when Thing happens and it triggers us um it's not that trigger being wrong it's noticing that trigger showing us something that we yes. get to look you know um yeah how does that does that make sense what other questions do you have about that <laughs> no it makes it makes sense to me you know like a lot of people they have they have a hard time just peeling away the you know all the negative emotions and really opening themselves up and, and letting go of of all the emotional garbage, you know, and, and it's, it's, uh, you know, for so many people, it's very hard to just let go. People tend to, you know, hold on to the past. And even though the past, you know, is gone and we can't change the past, it really affects people their entire lives. And that healing process, you know, spiritually, we can, we work within ourselves, we could actually, you know, um, help our, ourselves, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, because when we spiritually heal ourselves, we can mentally focus and we can clear, think more clearly and make more rational decisions in life. And as you know, stress, you know, 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. So all this stuff that we carry within ourselves 
affect us, you know, physically as well. There, it just breaks down the Im the immune system and just opens us up for illnesses to come in. So it's really important to be spiritually, you know, well, to, to make sure that your energies are aligned and to make sure that you see, you know, you're able to connect on, in a, on a positive sense and to release all that negative energy. And, you know, is there anything you suggest when it comes to releasing that negative energy, how to release it and let go? Yes, uh, so many ways. So I would say um, circling back to that foundational tool of rooting, of grounding here. Yes. You consider that as a way of like a hand slipping into a glove, mm -hmm. the spirit of us being able to be more present in our body. Yes. And we could frame it in all these different ways. So like some of the people I work with are very spiritually inclined. They really want to look at it through an energetic lens. The opposite side of the spectrum would be clients who are really just more interested on like the physical body level. Um, and, and then everything in between often a mix Yeah. when we look at things on just a body level, it's so, um, valuable because it helps us be able to, again, bridge spirit to body. Um, oftentimes, um, and I'm sure again, a lot of your like hardworking viewers who are like, just always trying to do the right thing, do more, heal, be better. Yeah. Um, I say, well, I should be here. I'm so spiritual. I shouldn't let this get to me. I should be able to let go of that negative thought. Right. When the biology of our physical body tells us we're not going to let go of it until we know we're safe from it. And so that's this like trick of bridging our spirit to our body to look at, well, where is our body? And therefore our thoughts still hung up on potentially old trauma yeah. that says no this thing is a threat that might still be dangerous. It might not in reality be right now, right. but if our body is still hung on to old trauma, that's where we get to look. Yeah. And so that's with meditation. And then ideally using more of the energy tools within meditation, we can meet with those old patterns, right? right? And the way we can find some of those old patterns, the old trauma is to look for what are the things that really get us, yeah. the things that really hook us, you know? And it might be, um, for uh, those of us who are really spiritually inclined and we like to look at things from a more, more elevated consciousness, we yeah. sometimes have to reach for the old petty patterns. We need to yeah. reach for like, how am I when I'm hungry or tired? What are the right. things that come then, right? Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Does that resonate with you? It does. It does. It seems like really being grounded and and really settling your roots is really important more than... I realize because I, you know, when you're grounded, you're, you're stabilized and you're able to have more wisdom, you're more, you know, feel, you feel more in control and you feel powerful and you're able to really focus and, and, and play your role, you know, but it um, really, it's the foundation. So really it does have an, a huge impact. And I really, that's, I think you're right. That's one of the main things we really should focus on when it comes to healing. You know, people focus on the heart, like I was talking about, but really, I guess the, the main foundation is being grounded first, you know, before you can move ahead, you really have to be grounded. Yeah. Cause the more that we're present, the more we notice everything and yeah. our spiritual growth is about getting to know ourselves on every level, yeah. anywhere there's a dark corner that maybe we aren't aware of or unconscious of is old pain tends to be kind of dark and hidden. The more present we are, the more grounded we are, the more easily we're able to kind of go there. Right. And one-on-one -on -one sessions can be really helpful because sometimes it's you know, on a scale of one to 10 with old emotional pain that might jump to a 10, it could be really helpful to have someone kind of hold space to look there and to kind of step towards the 10 yeah. to then bring it back down to kind of a, a middle ground that's um, more tenable for, for right. us to be able to work with if it gets triggered during like a day-to-day -day kind of time frame. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Now, when yeah. You know, how could you tell when someone has emotional blockage? Because a lot of times people will have blockage in certain areas, you know, in their in their in their body spiritually, which will cause, you know, problems, you know, for them. Like, can you are there ways that that you're able to tell, you know, where the blockage is? Is there things that you look for or you feel maybe when your hands are over somebody or you could just sense it? How do you know when a person has emotional blockage? Yeah. Well, about 15 years ago, I got trained in a few different forms of energy reading, uh, mm -hmm. energy reading, healing work. And uh, back then I would just, you know, I read with my eyes closed when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with someone and um, 
you can just see it. <laughs> I've I've always been a pretty intuitive person though. Even as a kid, I was really intuitive. So yeah. that just my forte is, is reading energy. And I think it's really helpful. Like it's helpful on a counseling level to not just jump to it and say, Hey, I see a block in your third chakra. This is why yeah. you're not managing what you want. It's helping move someone into a place where they can see it and feel it because they already do. Yeah. It just might be kind of covered over. Yeah. And so Nowadays, I tend towards really empowering people to move into them getting to know their chakras, them getting yeah. to know their spiritual journey and where they might be. Um, when we're in a space of feeling like there are stories that we're in the middle of, stories that are unresolved, meaning meaning there's still kind of challenges that we feel we're caught in, yeah. that's when we're in the middle of an arc. It's when we get to the redemption side of the story where we feel like, oh, I got it now, you know, yeah. in our in our family and relationships to ourselves or another, that's when someone's really coming into a res resolution. And that's where we all get to move. And yeah. so people often come to me when they're in the middle of one of those stories and they say, this doesn't feel right. This feels like a repeating cycle. Yeah. What's going on? You know, and so those are the questions that we move into where, yes, as an energy reader, I will be reading, kind of pointing them to what I might see in like their yeah. chakra system or something or their aura. But um, some people don't ever want to hear about that construct. And I'm like, that's totally fine. I'll still yeah. be reading them, but might be looking at it from a more kind of logistical framework, um, yeah. depending on what interests them most. I like that. You know, I, it, when it, when, when someone is, um, has emotional blockage, how do you release that from them? How, how are you able to, you know, help them, you know, overcome that emotional blockage? Well, I think the first thing, um, if we look at it just from an energy healing standpoint, um, the most kind of effective or talented energy healers know how to kind of notice something and clear it in themselves. And then it clears in the other person. I see. We only see in another, what we've experienced ourselves. Yeah. Um, and it's not, uh, this is where it gets, you know, tricky to talk about because it's not based on a linear scale, right? It can be past tense, future tense. But yes. when I notice energy in someone that's super stuck, I'll look for any old patterns that had been present in me and clear that out of my space. And it usually will go poof out of theirs. Okay. Um, and the more grounded I am, the more easy that that can be. Yeah. Now, do I necessarily say that? No, because that's not, it's not like people are coming to me necessarily to learn how to move energy uh, in that way. They might, for example, want to know. So if the energy is something that we'll look at manifesting, if it's blocking what they're wanting in their career, for example, and they feel like they keep getting a, a job or a situation in a job that just uh, doesn't work for them, they're unhappy, unfulfilled. Um, we might be looking at it and it's helping them recognize a, that there is a pattern there and feel safe with it because energy gets stuck when we resist it. And we say, no, maybe this isn't happening. It's their fault. It's my boss's fault. Something like this. Yeah. So that's under resistance. And so I get to hold space for more of a psychological level to go, okay, tell me about that. Let's look at that. Now, what if you're blaming maybe your boss for something or seeing yourself as a victim in this, I'm not going to tell them they're wrong. They're not wrong. It's looking at that from all angles, right? So where have they potentially victimized another in a similar way? It's helping them kind of get that holistic sense of a problem yeah. so that it fills out and then it's neutralized and it begins to shift. I see. And then the energy begins shifting that way too. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? Like there's a it million, does. there's so many ways to approach it and it's so dependent on the person and the situation, right? But whether we're looking at it from a body level, nervous system level to kind of get to know the, the memory, the thought and reset it that way, all the way out into just the energetic level. Um, it's really just meeting the person where they're at and helping them have that kind of, uh, holistic sense of what is it that's actually happening. Yeah. So they feel enough to let it go as opposed right. to trying to push against it. Yeah. You know, I see a lot of, you know, I get, when I, when I talk to people about energy healing, um, there are a lot of skeptics out there because you have a lot of people who see in the gray box and, and, and trying to explain to them that the whole world is run by energy. Everybody is, is, you know, if we had no energy, we wouldn't exist, you know, <laughs> right. but it's, uh, how, you know, 
if, if do you have people that come to you sometimes and they they they're looking for help but they might be a little skeptical like how do you explain to people you know about um something that they can't see because that's what it is what a lot of people who are skeptical are usually the ones that have that type a or type one personality if they need facts they need data and if they don't see it it's hard for them to really absorb it and totally. how do you really you know explain to these people that it goes beyond facts and details that there is another area of our life that is is spiritual that there is it's a higher a higher level of being like how do you get that across to people so they understand yeah well it's a great question and it does come up um i i am also very much a data-driven science person and i'm a very spiritual person and so mm -hmm. i can kind of walk in both worlds and honor all of those perspectives. Yeah. Um, I, if someone comes to me, it's very, very rare. It's happened just a handful of times over 15 years. But if someone comes to me and has that stance to like prove it to me, yeah. I'll be like, no, thanks. Like you get to believe I, I'll be, I usually answer with like, well, what do you believe? Let's look at that. I don't need you to believe what I believe. Right. Yes. I have beliefs because being a person, we have to pick a lane, you know, Yeah. but I, I have such a kind of a broad set of perspectives on how we can look at things, how we could frame them. Yeah. And that they have truth in it. Um, also, though, to answer the question of like, well, how do we explain energy? How do we open up this space to help it feel more accessible to people and not just be a woo woo -wee thing? We can just look at it from carbon universe level for an atom to have energy to do anything. There's, I mean, there's energy there. It came from something, right? For yes. all these atoms to be held together to have a body there's energy. And, you know, um, when we think about reading energy is where it gets really messy because people say, well, science will never prove that. And I say, well, that may be true. And the fact that I can close my eyes and read someone and A, it feels valid and accurate and B, it helps them is proof enough to me. Right. Yeah. And that's what I say. And it's like, if that doesn't feel good to you, if that feels woo woo -y or weird or dangerous, I'm like, that's okay. Yeah. You can have that. And I will honor that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's about that kind of mix of having our viewpoints and perspectives, having the sense of a greater kind of uh, consciousness with how we might look at things and tolerance for all of the different viewpoints. We need mm -hmm. everyone to have their viewpoint and there's no reason that everyone should believe it. Right. And I like that because in our society, you see so many people trying to push their beliefs on other people when it's really you have your choice of what you want to believe and that's fine. You know, we all have our, our own belief system and that we should honor each other's belief system and not try to convince or push our beliefs on somebody else. And I like how you express that. That's a beautiful way of expressing it, you know, because there's so many people that always are trying to push their beliefs on everyone else, that their belief is the only belief and it's the right belief. And it's really not. It's it's what you believe and what works for you as a person. And I think that really is, is a strong, strong point that you made. Thank you. Yeah. If we could all learn to just listen to each other instead of try to tell each other, you know, it would help so much right oh, now because yes. it's okay for people to have very different beliefs. Yes. I still absolutely, you know, believe that spiritual, uh, spiritual awareness and energy uh, offers people so much joy. And so yes. that is one of my primary things, but it's not for everyone and that's right. okay. Yeah. I feel it's very enlightening. I feel it's very, it brings me to a different level in life. It makes me see things differently. It makes me feel differently. It makes me, I, I feel being spiritual and, and, and practicing, you know, energy healing and practicing different ways of spirituality, I feel has taken me to a higher level in life and has helped me both, you know, like we spoke mentally physically and spiritually as it i think it, it helps you all the way around like because to me i feel like everything is connected you know it's not just your mind and your body and your spirit or you know it's it's all connected and what just like the energy it, for everything to work right we have to be connected i feel what do you think I totally agree. I totally agree. And that this whole world is based on relationship. It's just one thing in relation to another. Yes. Um, it's fun to think about how the consciousness that's in me is the same as the consciousness in you. We're just in these different forms to get to know ourselves. Yeah. 
So what a fun thing. And I think there's so much joy that's untapped when we, uh, that we can access when we open to more of the spiritual layers of ourselves, because we are multidimensional. Right. And if we down the spiritual or consciousness dimension of our awareness, we will feel apathy. We'll feel depressed. We might even feel anxious from that because yeah. it says trying to, you know, cut off a, a integral part of ourselves that like you say, once all of that is kind of connected and talking to each other, that's when we feel the best. That's when we feel that sense of uh, innate wholeness. That's always there. And can you explain more to people what it means to be multidimensional energy, like like what what it entails and what it's all about? Yeah, yeah, it's a fun question. Well, so if we think about um, the kind of spiritual foundation for our world, we could consider it being generated from a consciousness mm -hmm. that is like this incredibly intense energy that says, Ooh, what do we want to create next? And then ta-da, we have a carbon-based universe that is moving and developing and growing over time. And little by little from kind of the minerals and then the plant life and then animal life into a human form where we can become self-aware, we have all of these different steps of, of consciousness taking form and getting yeah. to know itself through these different forms of uh, expression of the consciousness. As a human, it's really uh, incredible because we have a physical form and we uh, have these incredibly complex, you know, kind of sophisticated brains and the hardware yeah. of these bodies that can become self-aware and has all of the shockers, right? Has all of the uh, capability of feeling things on a physical level, emotional level. We know we can create things. We know we can love and receive yeah. love. We can communicate and share our voice and hear the voices of others. We could see and create from a six chakra level and really yeah. relate on a more spiritual level. And then the seven chakra is about that kind of wholeness of spiritual connection where spirit meets body. Yeah. And so when we look at, you know, um, again, the just physical layer, because like a lot of what I just said, people who are not into energy, you're going to be like, no, nah, that's woo woo. -wee, I don't know. That's made up. But I'll be like, cool, that's fine. Just on a physical level, even if we don't look at that, yeah. we could feel in our body something else, right? When we close our eyes, we could feel something we can we know we're not our body when we close our eyes because you feel as if um, you know you're not embedded in it. If you were your body, when you closed your eyes, you wouldn't be able to have a sense of having the body. You would simply be it. Yes. And you know, it's a it's a funny concept that when people start to get that, they're like, oh, I I am not my body. I close my eyes and I know I'm with it, but it's not just me. Yeah. And so anyway, these are all these ways we could look at from the very the most zoomed out level of kind of yeah. universal consciousness and how it's expressing here and how we're becoming aware of being aware and being the awareness that's becoming aware of itself. Right. Exactly. You know, and I think it's a wonderful thing when you can open up the crown and you can actually connect with the spiritual world. It's, it's a, it's an amazing feeling. And, uh, and, and even people have talked about how their, their body has left, you know, you know, they had experiences when they were sleeping and they could tell that they, their body, their, their inner spirit had left their body. And when they, and they discussed the, how enlightening it felt like they were free, like a bird. And it was like a wonderful impact, you know, and then later they came, they felt themselves go back into their body. And uh, have you ever had any experiences like that or work with people like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have had some experiences like that. I, um, I remember as a little kid, um, I daydreamed a lot. I was very introspective and yeah. it was during a lot of my just kind of daydreamy uh, times where I would fall into this sense of just utter and complete connectedness that I do yeah. find when I meditate at times, uh, where you just lose the sense of identity with the ego or the thoughts of the body. Yeah. And when we get back from that, you just are everything. Everything is connected because it's all consciousness, right? Yeah. It's always been a part of me. And it's what, even as I remember, I was probably five or six, the first time I had this incredibly powerful experience of falling into oneness with everything. And it feels like um, light, but it's light that's so much brighter than what we see physically, you know, it's yes. just this incredible experience. And so, um, yeah, that type of experience has really moved me on um, to, I don't know, want to bring that to others, not necessarily the same way I have, but to yeah. help people 
up to more of that sense of who am I beyond just this physical expression of me? Right, exactly. And I think there is more to us than what we actually see physically on this planet. You know, there, you know, I, I feel that, you know, you know, spiritually, you know, many people have talked about being, you know, from light years away and then have come back to, to earth and, you know, people, other people are like, whoa, that's too much for me, you know? And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think that's cool. I, I think I tend to really, I don't know, move from a, as much of a balanced approach as I can um, yeah. to kind of balance like the physical kind of more normed way of being on on earth uh into the spiritual realms and so some of the people i work with will have that sense of being um uh what would i call it like having connections to i don't know other types of realities or earth planes or th- or other worlds and things like this and i can like totally hang with that right yeah it definitely like takes it into a direction that i think is harder for a lot of people to have and that's where yeah. Like, I like to just try to norm the space where wherever someone's at is just yeah. right. For, and like, it doesn't have to be weird. It, it right. can be totally re- regular people doing regular jobs like I used to do. Yeah. And still have a sense of like exploration of just being curious about who am I as a soul? Who am I yeah. as conscious? Like, that shouldn't be weird. That should right. be, in my opinion, like a very normal um, kind of baseline for getting yeah. to know ourselves beyond what's kind of obvious to our physical uh, self. And one question for you is when it comes to work-life balance, when, you know, either being a full-time mother or being a mother with a job and just trying to, you know, if you're married or you're with a partner, there's so many different things going on in your life. Are there certain types of practices that you suggest that people can do at home or at work and just be able to release stress and get some balance back into their lives? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, I think um, from a day-to-day perspective, mindfulness techniques like breathing and feeling our feet on the floor, Mm -hmm. they sound overly simple, but they are some of the most powerful tools to bring us back into this moment, right? We don't need to even imagine energetic roots to ground. We can breathe feel our body and then we're here. Um, one of the gifts of these physical bodies is that we can only, our brain can only focus on one thing at a time, Right. And so it can feel like our thoughts are all over the place. Cause we might be mapping, you know, millisecond to millisecond, a yeah. thousand different thoughts. But if we even for a moment breathe and focus fully on hearing our breath or feeling our feet on the floor yeah. for that moment, we're here, we're present. Right. That can begin slowing us down. That begins meeting with the nervous system of the body to help us just have more of that sense of self-soothing and and comfort, even when the world around us is totally crazy. So I would say if, um, you know, breathing techniques, uh, if someone hasn't explored that, I would encourage you to do that Mm -hmm. or the simple uh, reminder to feel my feet, you know, in a certain meeting or a certain time of your day, when your child's having a tantrum and you feel, ah, kind of overwhelmed, take a moment and see what happens. If you remind yourself, what do my feet feel like right now? It brings us back. It's really incredible. That's amazing. I love that. I love that because it, it does seem so simple, you know, but you know, until you do it, just like I mentioned, you know, when I first started to meditate many moons ago, it wasn't easy, you know, but it sounds so easy, you know, but it, it's not always so easy to get yourself to a different level, to bring yourself down and to to root yourself and ground yourself to a certain level is not always an easy task. But once you learn it, it could be very self-satisfactory to your to your mind, your body and your spirit all as one. Exactly. And then it's like a muscle that just gets stronger. And so it does get easier and easier. But there was a study that came out that uh, showed that really demonstrates how hard meditation is for people. Yeah. Uh, it, they did a study where they asked a group of men and women if they would rather sit with their thoughts quietly for 15 minutes in a room yeah. or give themselves a painful electric shock. And it was 40% of women chose the electric shock and 60 or 70% of men chose the electric shock. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hard, right? It's it's hard to do. And so I want to norm that for people. If you're trying to meditate and it's hard, 
yes, it is for everyone until you kind of get through all of that, like you called it emotional or mental garbage. Yeah. Um, that's where someone like me can just help you reset that. And then yeah. it becomes much more uh, accessible for you on a day to day. And what kind of services do you do and where can people find you? Um, well, I, everything's through my website, uh, lindsaycluin.com, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-K-L-U-I-N.com. Um, I do offer a free monthly guided meditation every month. Um, one's just for my town here in Colorado, the other's for anyone ev anywhere in the world. And I do send a free recording afterwards if you can uh, only participate async for all of us who are busy with, I have little kids too, for, <laughs> we're all been doing all the things. Um, and so free meditation every month. Uh, I would encourage you to start there. I do offer one-on-one -on -one sessions and uh, I do offer classes. And so like the March class is coming up are Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, where it's a deep healing meditation, where I guide people, all levels of meditators into a really deep meditative space, yeah. where then we begin exploring and utilizing firsthand some of the energetic techniques that I use on one in one-on-one -on -one sessions. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today, what type of t takeaways would you like to emphasize from everything that we talked about? What would you like the listeners to really understand? Yeah, um, I would say that where you're at right now in this moment, no matter what it might look like or feel like is the right moment for you, right? Mm -hmm. I really do believe when we step way back and have a really big perspective on what's moving in our lives, yeah. there's a sacred um, symmetry to things. Yeah, And that's what I help people find when we're in the, the depth of the challenges of our day-to-day -day as working moms or dads and, and doing the jobs, having all the stress, it can feel as if we're caught just in this kind of physical experience that can feel like Groundhog Day, it can feel like this cycle that's yeah. really pleasant and might not get better. Um, if it feels that way, it's because you're in the middle of your story and right. that you have to kind of know that you will get to the end of that story where it feels a lot better, where you see and experience that um, sacred symmetry um, in your life. Yeah. And if you're not there yet, that's okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, this has been great. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for coming on the show. I, I really enjoyed what you had to share with us today. I think the exercises you provided were wonderful and for even explaining things more thoroughly to people so they understand what, you know, um, what uh, energy healing is and, and different ways to go about improving your life, you know, with different ways of, of healing yourself, you know, spiritually. So thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been so much fun. Oh, same here. You have a great day. Thank you. You too.